Danny Flexen here at the Peacock Gym with top trainer Mark Tibbs. Mark, how are you doing? Lovely, thanks Danny. Thanks very much. Yourself? Yeah, good. We've been speaking to some of your fighters, obviously. Yeah. You've been putting them through their paces this morning. Let's just go through them, like one by one. Let's start with uh, Charlie Duffield, who we spoke to just now. He's uh, keen to rebound from that defeat. He suffered to Dan Aziz, of course. What sort of stuff have you guys been working on in the gym to, to get him where he needs to be? Well, uh, well Charlie's, uh, Charlie's no spring chicken, yeah? He could do with suppling up a little bit, so he's less rigid. Uh, I've always said that to him for, for a long while ago, and, and, you know, he can punch like a bloody mule kicks, and, uh, and he's fast, but you know, he didn't perform against Dan Aziz, and uh, the, better man, the better man won on the night. But um, he's so eager to get out again, and keen to get out again, that, uh, that he's such a good man, I want to you know, do what I can for him. So, 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 Phys physicality-wise, he's, he's all right. It's just, uh, it was a mental thing against Dan that night, so yeah, so. We're waiting on, uh, he's got some clearances he's got to get from the board of control. And uh, once he gets the, the thumbs up, hopefully next week, uh, we can plot, plot a plan. And another man that we're waiting to come back from a first pro defeat is John Harding Jr., Pester of course. He just seems really, really keen to get back in there now. I'm sure you're keen too. John's like, John like, he's a, uh, he can't wait to get out. He's like a, like a race dog getting out of the traps, <laughs> he really is. He moved around today really, really well. I didn't move around. He, he, he had a good spar as Edmonds, broke him in today. He done, I reckon he'd done about six, seven rounds, but he looked brilliant. He, uh, he looked phenomenal. I showed him something with his left jab. Instead of jumping him, letting the feet show it, he was just popping it, popping it. He had six, six, little six, four inch close arm, just popped that jab. And uh, jabbing people's heads off doing it. And uh, I think that's the key to him. He can fight and, he, and he's game and he's, uh, he's just, uh, He's got to get a bit more cuter, setting stuff up, yeah. Big year, of course, for Harvey Horn, his weight class. There's not a massive load of depth here in the UK. So he's someone who can move quite quickly up the ranks. He was talking when we spoke to him earlier about Sonny Edwards, potentially, I guess, towards the end of the year. Is that something you're behind? Well, the way Harvey's, uh, the way out, since he won that, since he won that, that European, uh, Harvey, he's matured, he's matured uh, at a rate you know, a nice rate. He's mature. He's come on. He's thinking, his attitude, the way he carries himself. So that's a plus, and uh, he needed to as well. So yeah, I mean, listen, he's got, he's, he's, got, he's fighting on the 22nd of February. February, we're, we're preparing for that. And um, yeah, he's uh, he's doing he's doing everything I'm asking from him. And uh, we've got some serious sparring coming in uh, next week. And so listen, let's get the February one out of the way and uh, go from there. You closed out the year, obviously, with Richard Riakpour winning the vacant British cruiserweight title, stepping up to that um, British level with a plum. Very good fight as well, entertaining yeah. fight against Jack Massey. Well, I say entertaining fight. I think there's a bit too much holding on both sides for uh, some people's liking, but I found it a, a gripping fight, let's say. What's next for him, and do you see him staying at British level for a little while? Uh, Richard, Richard, Richard. See, Richard's had some... Uh, he's been up against it in his last four fights, emotionally and physically but um we you know with 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 the with the experience he's got he's done phenomenally well and um i understand that uh dion juma had a tough fight against sam hyde the other night and uh you know i fancied i fancied dion to do the job but his inactivity um how you doing james his, his inactivity put a question mark you know in my head but uh i didn't see the fight but i saw a few bits and pieces of highlights out of it and uh, yeah, Dion's, uh, I suppose he'll be wanting to fight Richard soon. We've, we've done the rest of them. Uh, I don't mean it, you know, with respect. Uh, see, 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 see Richard. Richard's, uh, he's, got, he's got phenomenal power in both hands. And, uh, and he's, he's learning not to rely on that, but to set stuff up, to set it up. You know what I mean? And uh, he's got confidence in that. I mean, they was caught talking about the Sam Hyde fight, having that again, and uh, I didn't see the point really because uh, you know he's moved on, he's, he's ticked the box on that, but um, obviously it won't happen now. Now he's just been beat again, but um, all he, as soon as he lets his hands go, he does serious damage, and uh, that's with anyone. 
How important is it with Richard that he stays at domestic level for a little bit or has those building fights? Because obviously he started relatively late and he's still quite limited in experience, although he's had real quality opposition. Well, like you say, he's got the, he's got the, uh, the British title now. He can, uh, he can look at, um, talk to his management, Dillian and ourselves and whatnot. He can look at uh, keeping that belt. So he gained some experience defending it. Uh, I think he's a couple of couple of defences and a voluntary or, or the other way around and then he got he wins it uh, fights it defends it three times he's got his experience then before he moves on and keeps the belt so that's a, that's a way of doing it I guess